All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast, BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. Now, today we are going back to 2006, and first I would like to kind of give some thanks to the channel DankNet. They put out a video about Chris Hansen and TCAP, and I was looking at that and I was like, hmm... TCAP, wonder what that is, but very simply, to catch a predator. It took me like uh, two minutes to figure that out, and I was like, oh, feeling a little bit slow. But I, when I say it, for, I wanted to give them thanks. They reminded me of a case that I had wanted to talk about on this channel for a long time, and that was the incident involving to catch a predator and Murphy, Texas. Very specifically, there was an individual in Murphy, Texas, who ended up committing suicide after he was um, faced with being on To Catch a Predator, after the media crews had arrived, and his name was Lewis Conrad Jr. This is one of the more famous cases from To Catch a Predator, because of course Lewis Conrad Jr. was the assistant district attorney at the time, somewhat of a high-profile individual, and I believe that it's just like, to catch a predator really wanted to zone in on him and they wanted to take him out because of his high profile status but also he had broken the law because very famously in the state of texas you don't have to kind of go through the traditional to catch a predator sting and the way that would work is that someone would start talking to somebody in a chat room with a decoy from the group perverted justice and then they would kind of solicit sex from a minor and that in this case actually with lewis conrad he um actually solicited a 13-year-old boy, and he wanted to meet up with the 13-year-old boy and have sex with him. But the thing is, um, in, in, in Texas, you don't have to go to the place, you don't have to meet the person, you don't have to have any interactions with them, and that's not the same nationwide. And that's why the show To Catch a Predator exists. It would always have people, people would have to show up at the place, and then the decoy would lure them inside, and then, of course, the famous moment, why don't you have a seat? I'm Chris Hansen, and Chris Hansen, of course, from Dateline NBC, doing a story about men who are meeting people on the internet, and uh, if you follow To Catch a Predator all, we don't need to sound like a loop. I'm sure you can know the spiel better than I do. Okay, but the reason why I wanted to talk about this was because, very famously, it ended in a suicide. It was, there was a lot of... Um, a lot of press. I mean, they had, the, they had the cameras rolling. They had a SWAT team show up at Lewis Conrad's house. And I mentioned on the past, in the past rather, that I have sort of, you know, my top 10 favorite conspiracy theories. And one of them that I would probably put in the top 10 is they, the theory was that in Texas, in Murphy, Texas, that they were not using the um, proper channels of authority to do this operation. And that the police, the local police departments, were getting their orders from none other than Chris Hansen himself. Not Dateline, not NBC, not producers. Chris Hansen was masterminding and commanding a series of local police forces, and we're dealing with multiple kind of like jurisdictions here, to kind of do the sting operation. And the reason why I used to put it in my top ten conspiracy favorite conspiracy theories was I just thought it was such an outrageous theory that they would think that Chris Hansen, of all people, who is just the host of a show, I mean, we're not even talking about Lauren Michaels here or something like that. Chris Hansen is masterminding local police departments in Texas to kind of do the sting operation. I mean, I thought that was very outrageous. But the thing is, though, somewhat of the it's actually true. And to the credit of... Um, once again, to the credit of Danknet, they actually re revealed a lot of primary source documentation and just videography, really, about how there actually is some truth to that, that Chris Hansen was feeding information to the police, he was feeding it to them directly, as well as, um, I guess you would say, kind of giving some, some level of instruction. Not completely true that Chris Hansen was masterminding the police forces. He's not like he's like, you know, Commissioner Gordon or something like that but he was influencing the police to take certain actions. And the exact video I'd reference is The Rise and Fall of an Icon, Chris Hansen versus T-Cap from uh, Danknet. Um, that was something that uh, was helpful. And, you know, like, it's good that they kind of compiled, like, the primary source videography associated with this. But the thing is, though, what's, what do we have the situation going on then? Okay, Lewis Conrad is in his house, and 
then he is very slowly surrounded by the police. They start staking out the area. The people from To Catch a Predator and Perverted Justice are there as well. They know that he's in the home because there had been a morning paper that was out front on the doorstep and like kind of like just out you know in front of the house a morning paper and then that paper was gone so they believed that he had come out at some point and went back into the house that they're almost 100 percent sure that he was there then during the raid it the raid takes place you know they, they just go in they got the cameras rolling and everything and lewis conrad committed suicide using a 38 to uh put death, death from gunshot to the head so what do we make of that Who's responsible? What's going on with all of that? You know, it's like the um, kind of expose that I just referenced about uh, Chris Hansen and To Catch a Predator was very hard on the To Catch a Predator crew, bringing up lots of issues about Chris Hansen and his personal life. I don't even want to um, really comment on that right now because I don't think it's relevant. And we mentioned, though, that some of that conspiracy theory was true. To Catch a Predator and Perverted Justice did ignore certain... Um, pro certain bureaucratic issues. They didn't go through the proper channels to do the sting in Murphy, Texas. And like, you would sort of say that they cut the red tape themselves. They kind of just ran through the red tape without, um, without going through the proper channels of authorities, like going to the office of mayorality and such. But are they responsible for the death of Lewis Conrad? What I would say is that uh, Lewis Conrad's sister filed a $100 million lawsuit, and it's the, it's the family as well. A $100 million lawsuit was, um, filed, against M M it was filed against NBC and, um, for like, kind of like this, this wrongful death. But I really have to quote something from the Houston Chronicle. The idea that anything led to the suicide of Conrad other than his want to avoid potential penalties for soliciting a 13-year-old boy sexually is outlandish. We encourage all interested to read the Conrad chat logs and verification call recordings. Once you do that, then you'll immediately know why Conrad shot himself rather than face the criminal justice system. Once again, that was from the Houston Chronicles piece on, um, on Conrad, on Lewis Conrad Jr. and his suicide. But that's the point, though. I have to agree with that. To Catch a Predator was not responsible for the suicide. You could say that maybe they could be in some legal trouble because they didn't go through the proper channels to get the proper certif the proper OK Go, rather, to conduct their sting. That's a bureaucratic issue. And furthermore, that's kind of like, we're kind of separating legal versus moral and ethical right here. They were not responsible for the suicide because that's what it is guilt you see very clearly someone knew he was guilty and furthermore not only did he know he was doing something illegal he knew that he was doing something shameful and morally wrong soliciting sex from 13 year old boy i mean in all fairness most people probably know that that is wrong even the ones that are going to be doing it they probably have some sense of awareness that it's going to be not only illegal, but it's probably wrong. They just want to do it anyway for their own sort of gratification and selfishness. They probably think that they will not get caught, even they, though they know it's morally wrong. With a lot of these issues, it's like there's a certain amount of gray area sometimes. And I'm not talking about anything to do with like the actions of Lewis Conrad. I think um, those are pretty much... Um, very, very clear boundaries of right and wrong. There's a very wide line in between right and wrong in that case. But sometimes, you know, when you're dealing with things like people and their personal life and such, I mean, sometimes we've done things in our past that maybe we can understand why, we can understand why someone would think it's wrong, but it's okay for us, you know? I mean, it's not a big deal in that way. I mean, the gray area exists for a reason. This is not a case of gray area. This is a case of someone who not only knew that he was doing something illegal. He knew that this was outrageously immoral, and that's why he committed suicide, because as an assistant district attorney, he didn't want to face the kind of legal punishment. He didn't want to face the humiliation, the embarrassment, and just the kind of rejection from society, the, the kind of just whole shame and the world coming down moment. So he took his own life. And I believe he actually said something to the SWAT team, something like, you won't get hurt or I won't shoot you, something to that effect before he put the gun to his head and ended his life. But the fact of the matter is, to catch a predator is not responsible. 
someone didn't want to face penalty for their own wrongdoings. And in many instances, a lot of individuals who are getting cornered by Chris Hansen on that show probably are feeling something very similar, but they choose not to act on it. And because they're most likely not armed, they're going to see a 13-year-old girl or a 13-year-old boy. You know, like, um, and, and they're not carrying a firearm, I mean, because they don't feel threatened or the need to or anything like that. But, you know, To Catch a Predator was something that we really did watch very frequently. All of us did. I mean, it's very well known. Chris Hansen is very well known. That I started saying the expression, though, like, this show is like crack. I mean, I say that about anything that gets really pulled into. Because someone uh, left a comment on an episode of To Catch a Predator just saying, this show's like crack. And yes, it is, because it was a very addictive show for a while. But um, Chris Hansen has tried to revive, you know, with a few other projects that haven't gone very well. And he's been in a lot of legal trouble, and he was caught having an affair and um, some things um, like that. But... I don't necessarily think that the incident right now that we're talking about is so much uh, connected to that. A lot of people would probably come after him because of his, you know, financial troubles or his um, extramarital issues. But when we actually want to look at this very specific issue, they might even have a case that NBC or To Catch a Predator and Perverted Justice could be liable. I mean, like, they might actually be able to say something about how they didn't have the proper legal authority to do this, therefore they... um should pay some money, and they did settle out of court. This has been resolved. They settled out of court. But um, in terms of more morality and ethics, I don't really see where they cross the line. I mean, if you think, though, that the cameras would have added anything, or if you were to make the claim that the guy committed suicide because they had cameras there, that um, maybe this was just too high profile, he was an assistant district attorney. You think there wouldn't have been press? You think there wouldn't have been media? You think his name would have been plastered all over the state of Texas and perhaps the entire nation? An assistant district attorney. And it's like he would have been very, very infamous, for lack of a better term. So it's like he knew that his world was coming down. That's what we can say. And it was shame and guilt and embarrassment and just he didn't want to face the humiliation of for his actions. His actions, no one forced him to ask somebody for a 13-year-old to have sex. No one forced him to do that. And you know, even if like somebody like a 13-year-old were to initiate some the conversation with a guy like him, he has to say no. I mean, if anything, Chris Hansen has taught us that lesson. Not that you needed to hear it. I mean, do you? I don't know who you are, but you listening right now, I don't really know if you would ever want to be with a 13-year-old anyway. Most people are repulsed by the thought of it. I mean, there's just like babies or something like that. But I mean, it's, so it does take someone who is kind of in a bad state of mind to begin with to even want this. And even if like, you know, like there, the person does initiate something first, you have to say no. And Conrad didn't do that. And then he chose to kind of pursue something for his own gratification. And that's why he committed suicide. Because he knew he was wrong, he knew he had done something wrong, he knew there was evidence, he knew he was going to be very, very humiliated, and you can't really blame To Catch a Predator too much for that. Although, on the legal side, people do have, you know, their own rights, people do have the right to the fair trial and such, and if the lawyers can prove that any single thing was not done properly in accordance with the law, boom, there goes the whole investigation, there goes the whole sting, and then they can possibly get off of that. How many times has that happened because lawyers have, you know, been able to prove that somebody had done something like, um, in a sort of an inappropriate manner, or that they didn't have the proper legal access to do something, they didn't have the proper legal authority to do something. There goes the whole investigation. But when it comes to something like the case of Lewis Conrad, it seems very definitively that he was guilty. Why? Well, Chris Hansen could very tell you. I have a transcript of the conversation, you know, that whole thing. I mean, they had phone calls. They had the chat log. They had a lot of evidence that was pretty damning. And this isn't a case of guilt or innocence. This is just like, could the lawyers spin a circle to get him out of it? Perhaps, but that's not what he wanted. He wanted to be free from the humiliation. He, by I mean Lewis Conrad. So that's kind of where we ended up today. And um, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, like, it's kind of an unfortunate thing, though, that we really do have to divide the legal system and the ethical system. And there is a gray area in life for many actions. I mean, think about all the sort of um, 
kind of times that you faced a gray area in life where somebody thinks something is bad, but you think, hey, that's actually okay. Or how about the opposite? Maybe you can think of the opposite more easily. When someone is doing something that is that you believe is very wrong, but they think it's okay, we do have a gray area that we have to sort it out. But that's something that I think the kind of red tape and legal issues are the gray area in this case, and the actions of Lewis Conrad are just horribly wrong. They're just horribly bad and it's just like he knew it too that's why he took his own life so um i would say that to catch a predator might cross certain illegal lines they might cross certain ethical lines they might do some things that are not very glamorous but in this particular instance i would say that um they did not do anything too unethical and their their behavior did not lead to lewis conrad's suicide that's the big thing there their behavior did not lead to the suicide. That's all for me now. If you have any questions, please drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you, and until next time.